I've been asked again to turn the volume down. <laughs> Is that any better? <laughs> I found an old poem on the internet that I thought would go with the lesson today. Today upon a bus I saw a very beautiful woman and wished I were as beautiful. That applies to me. When suddenly she rose to leave, I saw her hobble down the aisle. She had one leg using a crutch. But as she passed, she passed a smile. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two legs. The world is mine. I stopped to buy some candy. The lad who sold it had such charm. I talked with him. He seemed so glad. If I were late, it'd do no harm. And as I left, he said to me, I thank you. You've been so kind. It's nice to talk with folks like you. You see, he said, I'm blind. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two eyes. The world is mine. Later, while walking down the street, I saw a child I knew. He stood and watched the others play but he didn't know what to do. I stopped a moment and then I said, why don't you join him, dear? He looked ahead without a word. You see, he couldn't hear. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. I have two ears. The world is mine. With feet to take me where I'd go, with eyes to see the sunset's glow, with ears to hear what I'd know, oh God, forgive me when I whine. I've been blessed indeed. The world is mine. Boy, have we got it made. And the sad part is, so many people in this wonderful country in which we live don't even realize how blessed we are. You got food to eat? A lot of people in the world don't. I didn't realize it, but the average wage in the United States is $56,000 a year. <laughs> I know where that puts me. <laughs> The average wage in the world is 17000 The average monthly wage in the United States is $3,263. In India, it's $295. The average life expectancy in the United States is 79.3 years, but worldwide it's 64.3. We've got a... We're 15, we live 15 years longer than the average people in the world. You know we're supposed to be on a 2,000 calorie diet. The average American eats 3,750 calories a day. The average person in Haiti eats 1,850 calories a day. Oh God, forgive me when I whine. We got it made. Forty percent of the people in the world don't even have indoor plumbing. Two out of seven people in the world drink water that's infested with feces. And we gripe and complain. You know, if you think about it, we've got it made. And a lot of people in our great land don't even know it. 
And that's talking about having it made physically. You talk about having it made. This morning I want to talk about us having it made in the spiritual sense. And we should easily see that when it comes to things in the spiritual sense, we really have it made. For example, we've got the perfect guide to follow. The Bible. The book written by men inspired in their writings. Written by about 40 different men over a period of some 1,600 years, yet without controversy, disputation, or disagreement in its writing. And it is the perfect guide to lead us from earth to heaven. You ever considered how often we get instructions? Well, I don't remember, but probably when I was little, my parents said, don't touch that. Burn baby. <laughs> we went to school. What do you get every day in school? Instructions. You get taught things. You know, I, I got to thinking. In all the years that I've lived upon this earth, I've got the years of schooling that I had in grade school, the years of schooling that I had in high school, the four years of electrical apprenticeship where I was instructed by those who had mastered the trade of working with electricity in the factory setting. I've had the privilege of sitting at the feet of several men who had a great knowledge of the Word of God and was able to study under them and learn from them. I went through time to learn how to become an emergency medical technician. I've had the years of study that I had to obtain that nursing degree. And all of this time of being instructed. And yet I still thought, you know, daily we learn. We learn what to do. We learn what not to do. If nothing else, we ought to learn every day just from our study of the Word of God. The Bible is our book of instruction. It not only instructs man how to live on this earth, but it instructs man how to prepare for that wonderful spiritual life that lies at the end of the man's race. In the 119th Psalm, in all 176 verses almost, we read about the principles, commands, precepts, decrees, laws, and statutes of Almighty God. In fact, about 150 times in this chapter in the book of Psalms, we read of the benefit of the Word of God in our lives. The psalmist says, for example, he says, I would not be ashamed if I keep thy statutes. He says, my way would be cleansed by taking heed to thy word. He says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against Thee. He says, Thy testimonies are my counselors. He says, I delight in Thy law. He says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He says, Thy law is the truth. He says, My tongue shall speak of Thy word for all Thy commandments are righteous. Just as we instruct our children how to live correctly, so God in His love for His creation has not left us without instruction. Jesus, when speaking of God's Word, said in John 17, 17, Sanctify them through Thy truth. Thy Word is truth. You know it's wonderful that we have the absolute truth to be our instructor today. We don't have to guess what's right. We don't have to guess what's wrong. But rather we have the guaranteed, unadulterated, pure, truthful Word of God to guide us and lead this through this life and into the beautiful life to come. You know what? We got it made. 
In this preacher's opinion, Another way that we've got it made is the fact that we have a holiday every week. Now this preacher is not making fun, so don't take him wrong. But here's, here's what I mean. January 1st, we celebrate New Year. February 14th, we celebrate our wedding anniversary. <laughs> well, see, see, I picked the 14th because I figured you ain't going to forget it that way. Well, I need to forget mine. Better not. <laughs> we make a holiday out of the birthdays of certain famous Americans who have passed. And July 4th, birthday of our country. And the list goes on and on and on. We've got different holidays that we celebrate. But as Christians, we have the command to have a day of remembering the great event of the sacrifice of our Lord. And we have that privilege every first day of the week. we got a holiday every Sunday. We've got a day that we can remember every day. Sunday, and we do that Amen. by observing the communion. A day of special remembrance. You know, throughout the Christian world, different denominations have chosen different times to remember the day that Jesus gave His life for mankind. Some once a month, they'll have communion. Some twice a year, some once a year. Some on Sunday, and I've seen it done on other days of the week. You go to that particular church, even if it's on a Thursday, and if you want to take communion, you can do so. But you know, what does the Bible say about that subject? That's the only thing that matters. As the Apostle Paul was concluding his third missionary journey, he had left Antioch of Syria, had gone over through his home country uh, of Tarsus, and he had gone up across the Aegean Sea, down to the city of Corinth and was making his way back and he gets up here to the city of Philippi and from Philippi travels down to the coast at Neapolis and from Neapolis travels back across the Aegean Sea to the city of Troas in Asia Minor back in those days in Turkey today. But when he gets there, he must have got there on a Monday because the Bible said he stayed for seven days and he did that so he could be with the brethren on Sunday you see there was something special that Paul wanted to do with the brethren in Troas on Sunday on the first day of the week what did the church of Troas do on Sundays well we read in Acts 20 verse 7 that upon the first day of the week hey that's Sunday that's that's today for us upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them. The first day of the week, that was the day that the Christians at Troas, Christians who had been taught by inspired individuals, met to take the communion. Some think they just came together to eat food, and that's what break bread means there. But actually, we find as we read on in Acts 20, that it was after they had broken bread, and it was after Paul had preached unto them, and it was after Tychicus fell out of the third story window, and they thought he was dead, and Paul brought him back to life. It was after all of that that they ate, that they had a common meal. So the breaking of bread observed by the church at Troas was not eating a common meal. They did that later. But rather it was the observance of the Lord's Supper. It was done on the first day of the week. Which first day of the week? Well, every week's got one. That narrows it down. Since every week has a first day of the week, then we must conclude that it was observed on every first day of the week or every Sunday. 
And so we yet today, due to this example left to us from the book of Acts, observe the communion every Sunday. What's its purpose? Well, in 1 Corinthians 1, 24 and 25, we read of the time that the Lord instituted this communion. And He said that we are to partake of the emblems before us. He said, in remembrance of me. In fact, I believe that's right here on the front of the communion table carved in wood. In remembrance of me. You know, every first day of the week, we as Christians have the wonderful privilege to remember that which Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago in the city of Jerusalem when He was raised on that cross between heaven and earth and gave His life purchasing salvation, eternal life for mankind. But we're forgetful. And so in order to make sure that we remember every first day of the week we're commanded to partake of the bread and the fruit of the vine and that our minds be upon the emblems and what those emblems represent. Thinking of Jesus and His sacrifice when, he partake, when we partake of these precious emblems. But I want you to think how much we got it made. That we have the wonderful privilege to remember what Jesus has done for us. You know what? We got it made. We got it made because we have a Father in Heaven who loves us. The Greeks and the Romans had idols that they worshipped. Had a bunch of them. They called them gods. But sometimes these gods that they worshipped actually performed feats that were detrimental to mankind. Stories of Greek gods tell of the lusts that they had, the power that they wanted, the hatred that they exhibited. And sometimes they were even vengeful against each other. These were those stories. Sometimes there was revenge of the gods against the gods, and sometimes there was revenge of the gods against humans. But I tell you what, we've got it made. Because the true God of heaven has done all things for the good of mankind. We have a God who is described as love. We read in 1 John 4 and verse 8, in fact, God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth knoweth God, is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Love. John 3.16 A passage of Scripture that I'm sure almost everybody, children included, can quote that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Romans 8, 38 and 39, the Bible says that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 1 John 4, 16 tells us plainly, God is love. 1 John 4, 7, love is of God. Jeremiah 31, 3, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. We have it made. We've got an opportunity to serve a God who does nothing but wants to love us. And everything that God has done from the Garden of Eden forward is so that man can be back with Him again. God enjoyed being, having fellowship with man in the garden until sin separated man from God and God wants man back. Well, we have it made. We have the opportunity to serve a God who loves us with an everlasting love. 
And this everlasting love of God causes our Father to be patient with us even though at times we fail to serve Him. We read in 2 Peter 3.9 that the end of time has not yet come because our Father is long-suffering toward usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know what? We got it now. We got it made and yet we gripe and complain about trivial matters. My shoes are dirty. My nose is runny. And it is. The car is old. Our kids don't have the brand new clothes like all the other kids have. The job can be a drag. But you know what? When you really consider what matters, we got it made. We got it made because we have the forgiveness of sins available to us. Due to sin, man has been separated from his God. And this separation has brought spiritual death upon mankind. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. When man sins, what he deserves is eternal separation from God. That's what he deserves. But that love of God, which we spoke about, makes it possible to have these sins done away with so we can be brought back into the relationship with our God. Romans 6.23 goes on and says that even though the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God has given us this book called the Bible that tells us explicitly how to have those sins forgiven. Jesus said in John 8, 24, If you believe not that I am He, you shall die in your sins. Sometimes we might get confused. Believe not that I am He. He, He, He what? You know, the majority of the world believes that Jesus lived. Whether if you're a Hindu, or whether if you're a Muslim, or whether if you're a Buddhist, or almost whatever, people believe that Jesus lived. What they don't believe is that Jesus was the Son of God. The confession that Peter made on the outskirts of the city of Caesarea Philippi, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what we have to believe. Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verses 3 and 5, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you'll all likewise perish. And repent means I'm going to stop living the way I'm living and I'm going to start living the way that God wants me to live. And we've got to do that. You can't continue living the life of sin and make it to heaven. That just makes common sense, doesn't it? Jesus said in Matthew 10, 32, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. And then Jesus said in Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So we put these verses together. That, that, that's what rightly dividing the Word is doing. And we find that you've got to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Decide to change your life to that which God commands. Confess the precious name of Jesus. And then be baptized for the remission of sins. And when you do all of these, when you're obedient to all of these commands of the Lord, then sins are forgiven. And that which separated us from our Creator is done away with. We got it made. Finally, we got it made because there's a place called heaven waiting for the redeemed. Jesus said in John 14, He's going to prepare a place for His own. And then He said, When I go and prepare that place, I'll come back and receive you unto Myself so that where I am, there you may be also. First Thessalonians 4.17 tells us when the Lord comes to be seen in the clouds, 
his own are going to rise up to meet him in the air, and there shall they ever be with the Lord. Going to be with him forever. Forever in a place that defies human description, but a place that anybody can reach if they'll but respond to the call of obedience given by our Lord. It's so simple. It's so simple that we've got it made. Today you can leave this building saying, I got it made. I'm a child of God. The invitation's yours if you're subject to it. Won't you come while we stand and sing? <laughs> There's a